this episode, we are talking about stewardship. S T E W A R D ship when it comes to the body. Third book of John, verse 2, it says, Dear friend, I hope all is well with you and that you are as healthy in body as you are strong in spirit. Like, are we stewarding that well? Am I stewarding that well? What am I in obedience to? My yeah. feelings? My hunger? Or is yeah. it self control? Mm. Can't have two masters. And so that really, for me, was like the catalyst for like, this is the the route that I want to go down. I believe that being well has so much more to do with our daily choices and the compounding effect thereof of good choices or bad choices. I used to think when it's my time, it's my time. Here we go. Back talking about destiny. I just always thought it was just destiny. If you die, you die. You have no part to play in it. And I'm just saying this as, let's just say, as a Pacific Islander, I think that there have been a lot of people um, in my life that have gone too soon, largely impacted by some of the choices that they've made. Mm. I think, I think. Yeah. I'm not going to say it's 100% correlated at all, but I think we could have helped ourselves a little better. Here, our heart on this is not like a judgment thing. No. Because this has been, we have, we have been earnestly learning because we want to age well and be healthy and fit for our children and yes. our grandchildren we want to be around for them and we also want to see our children healthy and well and prospering in all these areas and i think our goal in all of this is that it would bring encouragement to people and perhaps help somebody the way it's helped us Well, we're not live, but we are recording. Yes. Welcome to the Time and Paulina show. Yes. Is that how we'll say it every time? I don't know. We're not sure. Let's it doesn't see. really. We'll surprise you. Oh. Yes. Or will we? I don't know. <laughs> I just wanted to shout out. I've already gone off on a tangent. Yes. Behind us, you can see this big cabinet. Or if you're listening, sorry. Maybe you'll need to watch the video uh, episode. But behind us, we have this big cabinet. This big. What is it? A bookshelf? Yeah, kind of. Big shelving. It is a big... It's in... It's pretty funky. Shelf. Do you like it, actually? Yeah. For the See, most part. this is where I think Pointer probably likes this. And then I'm I'm always curious to hear her answer because she's like... It's... See? You heard. Yeah. It's it's like if I... I, I don't, don't not like it, but if I could choose... Like how uh, to build a cabinet, I would do it a little differently. So you like it, but it's not your style. It's not. See, I love when she does this because I always think, so I never know what she likes. So there's this old looking table there. If you had to ask me point blank, do you think Pauline likes that? I would say, I don't know because it's old. But So I think maybe she likes the antique vibe. But let's see. What do you think about that table? Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> It's where I'm going with this is that free. I'm still learning. It's a free table for our giant hallway. So it's That's great. That's true. <laughs> I'm still learning. So in that sense, I like it. And this is very helpful. It creates a nice backdrop. But if you're asking me really like, do I like it? Yes, I like it. This is my style. Would I, if I was building like our own place, styling our own place, would I build it like this? Maybe not. Maybe a little differently. I see. See? Yeah. But welcome. Welcome yes. to the Time and Paulina show. Thank you for mm -hmm. tuning in or watching. Yes. Um, what we're trying to talk about in these, all of these episodes, all I would say just filters down into us documenting how we're trying to go about being the best version of ourselves. And for us, what that looks like is trying to be as healthy as we can be in for us this is just for us for us f-o-r-u-s for us in our mind body and spirit mind body and spirit yes and so in this episode we are talking about the body so we're not going into any deep detail but in this one we're talking about how are we looking after our bodies in our pursuit of trying to be the best version 
of ourselves. And I think our goal in all of this is that uh, it would bring encouragement to people and perhaps help somebody the way it's helped us. Yeah. You know? Also just a challenge yeah. as well. Like we don't want people to just settle for where they're at. Not saying where you're at is bad, but if you've been wondering, is this all that there is for me or is this just how it's supposed to be yeah we don't know the answer to that but we're sharing our story and you know what it's like people share stories and you catch some inspiration from somewhere yeah and so we're hoping maybe this does that yeah that's it yeah so the word that we want to throw out there is a word you probably hear most mostly in church circles maybe is a word called stewardship S T E W A R D ship stewardship. Basically it means looking after being responsible for what you have. Yeah. The job of taking care of something. That's actually what it is. 10 points for Paulina. And so we're talking about that when it comes to our bodies. Yeah, let's talk about where we came from. Cause then can give them an idea of why we, Yes. Why we're here. If you can't see me, or maybe you can, uh, I'm a Pacific Islander. I am from the Cook Islands. Uh, that's my ethnic background. Uh, born and raised in New Zealand. And so, in relation to the food aspect, I would say that my knowledge of the effect of food on my body hasn't been like that extensive. You just eat because it's a cool thing to do when you're with family. You know, it's all part of the the social gathering aspect. Um, and exercise, when it comes to exercise, you know, if you look pretty good, it means I guess you go to the gym or you're working out, but that's pretty much it. So I didn't really have... A knowledge of you know the certain foods I would eat, what kind of effect it would have on my on my body. Um, and I'm just saying this as let's just say as a Pacific Islander. And if you're listening or watching, and you are a Pacific Islander, we probably all know that there have been a lot of people in our lives that we think have probably have gone too soon. So I'm just going yeah. boom straight to death. But growing up. I just thought this was kind of normal. You know, I had a lot of um, relatives and family members that have passed away. I thought they were pretty old, like 45. So, you know, as a 10-year-old, you think people that are 45 or 50, 60, oh, you know, they're old. But now, mid-30s, I'm thinking, wow, they were only 40-something, 50-something, 60? It's actually bizarre. It's crazy. And so what I'm not saying is, Oh my gosh, you know, look how badly they ate and they were big and didn't look after their health. This isn't like an attack on anything, but I was thinking, well, this is what has been modeled to me. And the model, what's been modeled is we just don't know exactly what we're doing uh, to our bodies. Yes. Like, are we stewarding that well? Am I stewarding that well? Um, so when I met Paulina, I noticed that she could see I had a lot of habits uh, in, my, in my life that she was like, um, why, <laughs> why? Yeah. It was just like, like your, a, like your um, 10, 30, 11 p.m. Burger King habit. <laughs> yeah, I'll just say in, in a nutshell, or as my old um, director used to say, in a nutshell. In a nutshell, yeah. In a nutshell. My diet wasn't the greatest. It was pretty bad, to say the least. Hmm. Just a lot of takeaways. Um, If I was eating at home, a lot of just greasy food. Hmm. And in what we're talking about, we're going to be talking about not just the body, but obviously, as I mentioned, the mind and the spirit. And I've started to figure out over the last seven years, so we'll get to that in a moment. Over the last seven years, I've seen the connection between things that I hadn't resolved like in my personal life, like to do with the mind and 
let's call it childhood trauma. Is it childhood trauma? No. Just stuff that's happened growing up that I hadn't dealt with or still had questions about. But I would find comfort yeah. in the food. That was an easy escape because yeah. no one's, you know, looking at you uh, sideways if you're rolling up to McDonald's. But, yeah. you know, I'm not doing drugs or anything. No. So my, my escape was, was just food, comfort food all the time. But I, I just thought I was just going out, getting something to eat, but not thinking about the effect of food on, um, on my body. So, so that's where I began. Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms of specific things that we started to implement, I guess we can talk about that later. But that's, I think that's a good yeah. kind of background on my relationship with food and where the influence comes from honestly if anyone's asking me i think i used to think when it's my time it's my time to go here we go back talking about death yeah but i think that there have been a lot of people um in my life that have gone too soon largely impacted by some of the choices that they've made. Mm. I think, I think. Yeah. I'm not going to say it's 100% correlated at all, but I think we could have helped ourselves a little better. Yeah. In that regard. Yeah. Maybe, you know? Yeah. So what we're trying to do is to do everything we can in, in our journey. So over the last seven years, especially, we're doing everything we can to to make sure that... That we live long. Yeah, that we live long, but not going too soon because we made poor choices Yeah, frequently. Yeah. I think, like, if I can share, like, my story briefly, I also didn't eat, like, incredibly well growing up. I just ate, you know, just whatever, whatever we ate. My mom really had a sweet tooth, so we ate a lot of candy, but... As a girl, I always already had like a big fascination with the human body. So I thought I was going to be a doctor. And then I went and studied beauty therapy and massage. And part of that course was nutrition. And it absolutely fascinated me because um, I was really learning about how the things that we eat have an impact on our physical well-being, how they have an impact on the well-being of our brain and all sorts of things. So fascinating. And then the principal of that college was in her 70s, 75 years old, and she was walking up. um, If you are familiar with Auckland City in New Zealand, she was walking up One Tree Hill. Um, At that time, there was still a tree there. Um, Every morning, every morning, she was walking up there. And I just really admired her. And I was like, wow, what is she doing? And um, in the time that I was there at the college, I just tried to spend as much time with her as possible and talking to her and asking her questions. So learning about, you know, what she ate and, and things like that. And so that really, for me, was like the catalyst for like, this is the, the route that I want to go down. I believe that um, being well has so much more to do with our daily choices and the compounding effect thereof of good choices or bad choices. And, you know, and I had to learn what, what were good choices and what were bad choices Mm. because, you know, I, I was also really at the beginning point of coming to understand this stuff. And the cool thing was, is that, you know, in, um, yeah, I'd always kind of been fearful of things like, cancer and things like that as though we have no control over whatsoever you know but then learning that like um for me like learning that physical and mental well-being actually had a lot to do with how we looked after our body like the choices we made in terms of um how we manage our stress and sleep and what we eat and exercise movement all of that stuff has an effect on us either um, in a positive way or a negative way. So that was kind of where that 
yeah, where I came from, like when when we started dating, you know, I was already very much into that, reading so much stuff and like actually kind of totally obsessed with just reading all these medical journals and peer reviewed papers and things like that on that stuff. Yeah. It was fun. Because you definitely, because I didn't know what I was doing. I was just like exercise. Yep. You go to gym, yeah. guys get buff and you just eat, you know, have a full tummy. And that was yeah. it. That's like my, like compared to what you've just said, that was that. And then that was my knowledge of yeah, yeah, food and exercise. Yeah. And so I just always thought it was just destiny. If you die, you die. Yeah. You have no part to play in it. Yeah. However, yeah. fast forward to today, three kids later, we have three kids. Um, yeah. They're age seven, five, and three, two boys and a girl, Isaiah, Tay, and Moses. Yes. And in the last seven years, we started eating plant-based. So I'll let you talk about what that actually means. Okay. So... We had, we had Isaiah in 2016. He was born in April, 2016. And uh, at that time we weren't eating plant-based and we were already like very aware of what we were eating. We were trying to cook everything at home. So we would still eat meat and dairy, but we were really cooking all of our meals from scratch with like the spices and everything like that, that we would add in on our own with the fresh vegetables and things like that. So we already were doing very well in terms of the way we were eating. But I was, at that time, I'd been reading so many things on many kind of um, differing viewpoints on whether um, meat and dairy were actually good for you long term and things like that. And it just came to this moment where I thought, like, when Isaiah started eating solids, that I was like, I don't know if I feel comfortable giving him meat. I just actually don't know if I want to give him meat Interesting. and dairy. Yeah. And so, and the funny thing was I, I did try. So he had like, for example, like avocado and sweet potato and stuff like that. And he loved it. But one time I gave him yogurt, um, he had really bad like reflux. I was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm done. I'm not going to go down that route anymore. And then um, I read a couple more things. I read a book called The China Study. And I really felt like, okay, for me personally, I felt I had learned enough from mm. different viewpoints um, that like from what I could understand that we were eating at that point too much meat and too much dairy, like for us. Yeah. And, you know, because we were eating meat every single day, twice a day, probably most of the time, because we would eat like our dinnertime meal and then the leftovers would be lunch. Lunch, yeah. And then you'd have meat again the next night and then the leftovers and so on. And then you'd have dairy with breakfast, like we had Greek yogurt and things like that. And... Um, I had been learning about really the the compounding effect long term of those of our food choices, and you know the body's ability or rather inability to kind of deal with large amounts of meat and dairy. And so for me, it felt like a really natural response to start eating mostly plant based. Yeah, because you also did consider maybe if we were to eat meat that we would have as um, organic, raw, um, yeah, a little bit like if we were to. <laughs> well, not raw, but like. Oh, not raw. Um, what did I say? Gra 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 what did I say? Did I say raw? <laughs> you don't eat raw meat. Liver King, let's go. Um, um, grass -fed, wild, like sorry. Wild game yeah. and things like that. Raw? But at that time, that was just clearly not an option for us financially it yeah. was like there was no way we were going to be able to sustain that financially and from what i had learned actually just we could meet all of our dietary needs to sustain good health by choosing a plant-based diet mm. so i pitched this to time and <laughs> here time was still 
like you had just ordered this massive tub of whey protein yes sir powder and i was like wow he's he literally just ordered it just started using it and it was a big tub too so i was like oh it's not like the greatest time to, <laughs> to to ask him but i'm just gonna ask him and your response really surprised me because i thought maybe you would be like i don't know if i want to give up meat but you're like like remember the context that i just painted before yeah, like because you know you fast food you loved meat and dairy yeah but at that point you had already given up milk remember? yeah i gave up milk because i had just for years growing up not straight away but after having milk and i would have milk with everything everything literally yeah. literally literally everything and anything the combo didn't make sense i needed milk but i always had a sore stomach yeah like not immediately but soon after that and i'm talking about from as long as i can remember yeah until paulina and i were dating and we're in the netherlands and well we were married at that point right yeah so in the netherlands yeah, yeah. um she said one day to me when i had just come out of the toilet i guess <laughs> <laughs> spent half my life in there <laughs> why don't you just try not drinking milk so i think you might be lactose intolerant like just try it i don't know what that meant but i said hey like i'm really sad to give up milk but i would way, way rather give up this sore stomach thing surprise surprise yeah i think the next week i hadn't had a sore stomach so i said well i guess that's the end of my milk journey which was really sad because in the netherlands milk was way cheaper Oh yeah, it was then, awesome then, there. In New Zealand. Oh man, and it was so good. Yeah. But yeah, that for me was like a real big learning moment, like thinking, oh my gosh. Yeah. And from there I just started thinking about, okay, like this food thing is yeah. ain't no joke. Yeah. And so I think yeah, we'll we'll talk about the specifics of what we actually do eat. And how that works with three kids. So all the kids yeah. have been brought up eating this way, plant-based. We are not at all, like in our household, we don't have yeah. any rules. Like if we wanted to have some meat, we, yeah, we're allowed. Yeah. Um, we can eat whatever we want. Yeah. But these last seven years, it has been enjoyable. That's why I've enjoyed yeah. still eating this way. Yes. Have I had some meat? Yes, I have. I can count it on two hands. Exactly. Five of those came in, in the last six months. <laughs> <laughs> hey Stuart, uh my dad and my brother. Thanks for that. Um Oh yeah, we had fish. At yeah. uh Torquay. Yeah, Torquay. Turkey? Torquay. 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 <laughs> Torquay. But we, we haven't put any like restrictions on ourselves yeah. for it. Yes. So this isn't like a diet we're trying to follow. This is just how we eat. And because it has been enjoyable, that's what's been the um the reason why i just kept eating it apart from the first meal that i cooked but we won't go into oh yeah that, that was horrible that was absolutely i was the like blandest thing we'd ever <laughs> had. Like, i'm going to mcdonald's it was this it was, yeah that was it was good. cauliflower something cauliflower stir fry ironically my favorite dish right now is the cauliflower curry oh yeah curry. that that wow that is completely different that's completely yeah. different we've come i've come a long way <laughs> yes since that so that's the food aspect i'd say the other aspect is you know no surprise to to anyone um we do try to make sure we are consistently active in terms of yes. move, moving our body yes so for me um i go to the gym not just because it's a good thing i need it it's a mental break for me as well. Yes. I need it yeah. for my brain. Um, and I will say that we're doing this. This is not at all, has nothing to do with image or vanity. Yeah. Although in the context of our relationship. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good thing. Yeah. So if anything, I do see the benefit of, you know, feeling good, feeling sexy for yeah. my wife yes yeah and vice versa like i have to say that having had three children 
eating plant-based because of of the nutrients that you get in a plant-based diet it allows me to eat so much within that so to completely like satisfy satisfy my hunger needs but still maintain such a healthy weight and i haven't always been over the past years been like super active as you would like imagine like oh maybe she goes to the gym all the time no i've i've literally just been taking care of my children taking care of the household washing vacuuming doing all that stuff carrying the children around um walking a bit and lately really kind of getting back into pilates 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 wonderful honestly really good just for um, flexibility strengthening mobility making sure that you know like our goal is to be able to move well into old age absolutely to, to be we yeah. we don't want to fall into the stereotypical you know mindset or what people think when you get old you start hunching over and yeah. you need a walking stick or something yes i think now that that's that's a choice yeah you know so a lot of us stop like i stopped moving like i did when i was in primary school because you know as an adult we don't crawl around on the floor like we're five playing with toys and going to the jungle gym and is that what they call them jungle gyms playgrounds yeah. sorry did you call the jungle gym but the thing is like i think the reason also why we're starting this is like as much as it is a choice, we also feel uh, that a lot of people don't realize they have a choice in how they kind of progress health-wise through the years as they age. Like a lot of people- Just let it be. Just let life happen to them because they just don't know. And this is absolutely like, hear our heart on this is not like a judgment thing. No. Because this has been, we have, we have been earnestly um, learning, you know, because because we want to age well and be healthy and fit for our children and yes. our grandchildren. We want to be around for them. And we also want to see our children healthy and well and prospering in all these areas. So it's been our journey. And and we just want to share that with you. Yeah. We're to just encourage it, you, like, whatever wherever you're at, you know, maybe you're at an awesome place or maybe, yeah, this is like bringing up some questions for you that, that it might bring some encouragement, some hope, some inspiration. Yeah. If, and if it challenges you. Yeah. That, you know, we don't like, we're not saying we have the answers, but no. we're just saying that you do have a choice. Yeah. Um, like that's for us. That's, that's been our experience. That's what that's been our experience in. Yeah. I just want to do everything I know I can to make sure that I'm not playing a part in me going too Yeah. too soon. Yeah. I don't want it to be because I didn't look after my body. Yeah. I didn't do what I could do, could have done. Yeah. And so this isn't fear of of anything. It's am I stewarding? Yeah. Am I looking after what I'm responsible for? Yeah. You know, that's that's Yeah, totally. It's our thing. Yeah, cuz we We've only got this one body and, yeah. you know, we have so many things that we're going to be chatting about, you know, but I think the link that we have um, discovered that is so crucial to, or has been crucial for us to see these improvements in our lives has actually been discipline. And that is, that is a mind game. Like we've had to choose. Yep. Self-control. Self-control, we've had to um, at times feel like we were sacrificing something, right? It felt sometimes like sacrificing, but then like ultimately we saw the reward for that in mm. an improvement in our well-being. Especially initially. Yeah. Switching yeah. over. Yeah. You know, what is it, 20 plus years of what we've been used, used to. Yes. And I'm thankful that you were already had already been thinking about this stuff for a long time. So yeah. for me, it's been, well, I don't know. I feel very lucky that yeah. that's where you're at, but I'm just trying to think of if I had to take, you know, like if you thought like I did about food, 
Yeah. We would be thinking, where, where, where do we start? And where uh, would we be right now? I have no idea. I know where we would be <laughs> at KFC. <laughs> Bao Shao. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Maybe at maybe at Hungry Jacks. Hungry Jacks. Well, they do do some plant based stuff. Yeah. Um, but what we're going to be talking about in all the episodes is that the body, the mind, and the spirit have an effect on each other. The way yeah. you look after, the way we are looking after those three things or trying to. Mm -hmm. um, for example, one of the challenges that we have is trying to get enough sleep. Yeah. It's, yes. it's, it's, definitely, <laughs> it's definitely a challenge because of having three kids. But yeah. you do see, I'm just, yeah. just saying, that the connection between, like, you know, here's a, is it, this is the example. If you don't sleep enough, your body isn't the only thing that's affected, right? Mm. Yes. Like, you're grumpy, I'm grumpy. Yeah, absolutely. Grumpier. So you have to mm. exercise more discipline and self-control in those moments. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, when I was younger, because I hadn't dealt with a lot of things from my upbringing that led me to take choices where I would try and find solace and comfort in food or going out and drinking and thinking that was going to solve the problem or fix it temporarily, band-aid solutions. Yes. And so with everything that we are responsible for, which is what we're saying, we're not saying this is for everybody. I know there's some people that will be watching and listening thinking, what the heck are you talking about? <laughs> but yeah. mind, body, and spirit, they're all connected. Oh, yes, absolutely. What were you going to say before I went down my serious line? Oh, goodness, I, I forgot that. It's okay. We're talking about the kids and sleep. You had a big smile on your face. Oh, yeah, I was thinking <laughs> the kids are not the only reason we don't sleep. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. We have three kids and... And, and we like to stay up late. Yeah, <laughs> we just hit go to be disciplined, self-control. We need to go to sleep earlier. Yes. But, that is one area of self-control. But after the kids go to sleep, we want to hang out. Yeah. Yes. yes so <laughs> it's a choice. Do we want to hang out or go to sleep? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So, look, we are going to be completely honest with you guys. That is absolutely just who we are. We're going to be transparent, honest. We are still working on a lot of stuff. We are still figuring stuff out. Oh, we always will be. And we always will be. Yeah. And we're The challenges just, will change, but... Yeah. This is the path that we're taking, and we're just going to see what happens. And if stuff doesn't work out, that's what we'll talk about. Yes. Um, so far, in terms of the eating and exercise for the kids and us, it's going pretty good. Yes. We think. Um, so for the other two, as you mentioned, uh, just real quick on the spirit part, how does that fit into the body? For us in our house, yes. um, the spirit side of us, of our... Oh my gosh, lost my brain. Oh dear. <laughs> Where did it Where go? Where is it? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, looking after our spirit is the most important part. It's the foundation of everything we're doing. Yes. And so we'll explain uh, more about that. I think not the next episode, the one after that. We started with the body because we feel like it's the most overlooked mm. in terms of our health, it, it, it seems, you know, got to look after the mind, you know, spirit, because it's foundational. But the body, oh, you know, it's kind of like this, it's just a body. The body's just along for the ride. It's just along for, yeah. 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 But a few questions, like for myself, was who, what am I in obedience to? My yeah. feelings? Yes. My hunger? Or discipline? Yes. Yeah. Am I in obedience to thinking oh no you know i'll just just eat whatever i want or i don't need to worry about it. it's just just my body like you said along for the ride or is yeah. it self-control yes which one of the two um would i be choosing so mm. can't have two masters reference there for those if you know then you know but a scripture from the bible that i wanted to read it is in uh, third book of John, uh, verse two. It says, "Dear friend, I hope all is well with you, and that you are as healthy in body as you are 
strong in spirit. Yes. And so obviously there's way more uh, verses and inspiration that we take for just trying to look after mind, body, and spirit. But this is where we're at. So yeah. we hope that it gives you a good indication of the direction we're going. Yes. And we're just a couple of parents trying to figure stuff out. Yes. <laughs> uh, we did used to live in the Netherlands for the last, been in Melbourne for one year, Netherlands for 10 years prior to that. Yes. Before that, we were in New Zealand. So we're yeah. trying to figure out a lot of stuff at the moment. Yeah, really. But that's it. Cool. How do you want to end? Uh, see you next time. See you next time. And, um, see you next time. From the Zoom H8 podcast, Default Towns. <laughs> <laughs>